Monday, I talked a little bit about Saucha. And I'm going to go through some of the niyamas this week and possibly some of the yamas of yoga too. So if you're unfamiliar, um, the niyamas and yamas of yoga are kind of like the, the internal um, personal disciplines that we cultivate and universal disciplines that we cultivate as a society to help us um, stay on the true north path. And, you know, being human is difficult and we have all these distractions and challenges that come our way that kind of take us away from aligning with the, the spiritual path. And the niyamas are given to us in the Yoga Sutra as advice or tools to help us stay on the path and um, kind of confront some of the, the challenges that we humans face. And same with the, the yamas as well. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about, um, so Monday I talked about saucha, which is the sense of purity, um, kind of cleansing the mind, cleansing the body, keeping things um, spacious and free and pure. And today I wanna to talk about contentment or santosha. That's the word in the Yoga Sutra um, for contentment. And contentment has, um, you know, many pitfalls like many things do, you know, I mean, we've all had the experience of feeling very content and we've all had the experience of not feeling very content. And um, there's many aspects to contentment. So you know, one is the sense of letting go of greed. And actually that's one of the, the yamas as well as um, cultivating a sense of, of non-hoarding or non-greediness. But if you think about that expression of you can um, eat a thousand cherries and crave more, or you can have one cherry and taste them all. And so much of contentment lies in that simplicity of being present for the experience of what you are experiencing, instead of wishing for something from the past or some different present for yourself than what is, or a different future than what you um, think might be. And um, this is difficult, but it's always the yogic path. It's always the yogic path to try to keep bringing us home to the present moment, be here now, um, where uh, contentment lives. If we are constantly fluctuating to the past or the future, we have a much more difficult time cultivating contentment. So contentment is different from complacency. So, you know, it's not to say that you, um, that we should not be working diligently to affect change in the ways that we see the change being necessary in our, in our personal lives and our thoughts, as well as in the world. Um, so it's not, oh yeah, I'll just be content with what is and, and not um, strive for something, uh, improvement in your life or in the world. So it's very different from complacency. Um, so try to sense that, you know, that the feeling content is just being okay with how things are while um, cultivating whatever you're trying to cultivate. So um, think about a time when you felt very content, whether it was, you know, you gave it your all and regardless of the outcome, you know, you're content because you just did everything you could do. You did the best you can do and that can have a feeling of contentment. Um, the presence that you feel when you're really stopping time and being fully in the moment, the contentment that lives in that. Um, so, you know, try to uh, close your eyes for a moment and remember a time when you felt deeply content where um, regardless of what the circumstances were, whether they were um, good or bad, joyful, sad, anything in between, um, a moment when you just were able to pause and be present and fully um, in the moment, not wishing for something different to be. And is this a moment where you could taste a thousand cherries in one bite? And isn't this a good feeling, right? So why wouldn't we want to cultivate a little more of this? Now, how to cultivate contentment? You know, when things are difficult, when you wish things were different, when you wish for something that somebody else has, when you are not satisfied with res the results, whatever is coming at you that shifts you off this steady aligned place of presence, how do you bring yourself back? Is it through a sense of letting go in the mind or body? Is it a sense of bringing yourself into gratitude? Is it breath? There are so many tools we can use 
to bring ourselves back to the moment of tasting all the fruit in one bite. Let's use our practice today, regardless of what's happening in your mind or body, as a refuge for contentment, to be here now, accepting of warts and all, you know, everything that's coming in this moment. Can you breathe and just be present? Come into your body, come into your breath. Drop down into the weight of you. Feel your earthiness, your groundedness, your physicality. Let your belly get big. Let your diaphragm get big. And when you feel that yielding toward the earth, let it rebound with a lightness that rises through your center. Feel your breath. Let it flow freely, easefully. Lose the straining in your skull, around your eyes or around your temples, through your tongue. Let go of the need to know or the need to do. And just instead turn inward to the feeling of presence, this moment. Can you just allow yourself to relax? Contentment requires just a bit of relaxing. Where do you feel that in your body? Place your hands together at your heart and bow in. Cultivate an intention for your practice. What are you working to bring forth within you? And then let's release the hands and come onto our back. All right, so find your way. Allow a sense of, <clears throat> As you come onto your back, allow that sense of freedom where you feel your limbs relax, your joints spread out, a lot of feeling of spaciousness and freedom in the body. So take your limbs wherever feels um, good for them to be so that you have this sense of freedom. And allow yourself to breathe here. Be content with just being here. We will move, but for now, just be here. Imagine um, that feeling you get when you know you're you're done with um, maybe a hike and you lie down on the grass for a moment and look at the blue sky and feel the warmth. Or maybe it's just the end of the day and when you climb into bed and you have that feeling of oh now I can rest. So just conjure up some of those feelings, whether that uh, those are visuals that uh, work with you or something totally different. And just let that be in this moment. Teach your body from those memories how to be in deep rest. How to be in the breath. And feel that here, instead of bringing yourself into a past memory, feel it here. there a part of you that has trouble dropping down? Is there a part of your mind that's antsy to move? And you just be content with this breath. All right, and then let's stretch a bit. So reach your arms, lengthen yourself. 
So stretch the right side, stretch the left side, feel that sense of invigoration. And if your joints don't move quite all this way, be content with where your range of motion is. Go to your edge and live there instead of wishing for a different edge. And then bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit. Sway from side to side. Feeling that sense of surrender as you feel your spine rock on the floor. And then let's circle the knees. Let's go one direction a couple of times. Feeling your sacroiliac joints, go another direction a couple of times. And then open your knees wide and bring them back in. And try to be very mindful of the sensations that you're feeling in your hips, in your pelvis, in your breath. And then right knee into the chest and stretch your left leg long on the floor and enjoy just this moment. Enjoy whatever you're feeling in your body. So instead of glossing over the warm ups and being like, oh, yeah, we do this all the time, let me be a little mindless. Be mindful, fully come into the breath and the sensations that you feel in your body. Now let's switch sides, left knee into the chest, right leg stretches. Feel free to move the feet. Feel a sense of length in your spine. Come into the sensations of the body. And then release that two feet onto the ground. Windshield wiper your knees left and right. And just notice where is your range of motion that's comfortable for your back? What are you loosening here by just rocking your knees one side and then the other? How is your breathing? On your next inhale, stretch your limbs far and wide and wiggle your fingers and toes. Exhale, tuck your chin up, knees into your chest and round the spine. A couple of more times, star fishing, opening the body, stretch out to a big wide X in your body. Exhale to draw into a little ball. If your head coming up feels okay, do that. One more time, feel the deep expansion. Stretching to your limbs, big breath. All your air out, squeeze all your air out, draw your head in. And then roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Okay. So take some time to just feel that sense of ease moving through your spine as you come to all fours. Notice the difference in the change of relationship to gravity than being on your back. Start to breathe and move, arching your spine, rounding the spine. Take care of each vertebrae. See if you can ripple one at a time and sense what each of those vertebrae feel like as you move into flexion and extension, breathing as you go. And after a couple of rounds of that, move freely. What does your body want? Do you want to swirl around in some circles or sway from side to side or move your shoulders or your hips or your head? Try to just explore the sensations of this moment in your body and revel in it. If you know, if you, if you were only able to do this movement, if this was all your yoga practice was going to be today, can you bring all of your practice into this moment? How is your breath? Can you feel into the body? Are things loosening? Does it feel good to loosen things up a little bit? Are there pain points that you're coming up across that you have to figure out a way to be content with? And then go ahead and stretch your hips back and find child's pose. Whatever range of motion is available to you, be there. Maybe your arms can stretch out in front of you. Maybe they can't. Be where you are. Relax your head and breathe. Walk the hands over to the left and open up the right side of your body and feel that engagement from your fingertips down to your pelvis. Feel the line and notice if there's any breaks in the line. Are you without sensation somewhere along that pathway from your fingers to your hip? And then come back and find yourself moving over the other side. Be content with the range of motion that's available to you. 
Stay in the breath. Feel the sensations. The beautiful thing about interoception, which is just this quality of sensing the inner body, the more we cultivate our capacity for this, the, it's a tool to keep us present. When we're in the body, we're in the moment. When we're in the breath, we're in the moment. So if contentment is something you're working with, living in the breath, in the body and living in the breath will help you. It will help you guide you into tasting the all the fruit in the one cherry. Come up onto all fours. Reach the arm up in the air. Either arm, just find a sense of freedom. Cross that arm underneath you and twist. Start to find something new. What part of your body are you experiencing now in this change of position that is new for this moment? Can you feel the back? What does the breath feel like? How does the, the joints of your ribs touching your spine, your vertebrae feel? How about your shoulder? And then go ahead and reach that arm back up in the air. Place the hand down onto the ground. And remember, everything's within your range of motion. Lifting the arm up, sliding that arm under. And you can have a little weight of your opposite hand on the ground to root yourself and twist just a bit deeper. Remember, anytime you twist, you don't want to force the twist. You want to breathe the twist. So be in the presence of this breath. Be in the presence of what you're feeling. What are you feeling? Look inside and sense and revel in the sensations of the body. And go ahead and lift that arm all the way up in the air again. Exhale and place that hand down onto the ground. Spread out your palms. Feel the weight of your hands. Where are you touching the earth? Can you feel that? And then curl the toes under and lift yourself all the way to dog pose. Now, this is a big pose, so take your time to find it. Maybe you want to move around a little bit and kind of like knead the floor with your feet or hands like a cat. Maybe you want to bend your knee or your hip swing or your head swing. So just find whatever it is your body's needing for freedom. And sometimes um, that sense of interoception happens better when we are still. And sometimes it happens better when we are moving. So do you want to vibrate a little bit, bounce on your feet? Do you want to sway and push one heel down? What gives you a best sense of being present? Um, so experiment with lots of different ways. Find the breath, be in the breath. And then go ahead and release, walk your feet forward. Come into Uttanasana, fold in half here. So. You know, we're moving slowly. So give yourself the time to feel what you're feeling in this pose that's different than anything you've yet done in your practice. Can you feel that sense of, of um, moving deeply into the hip joints where you're flexing deeply in the hips? Take your thigh bones back, widen your sit bones. Can you feel the soles of the feet and spread them out? Are they touching the floor? What does it feel like to touch the floor? What's the texture underneath your feet? Inhale for a halfway lift. You can hold the floor, the blocks, the thighs, the shins. Feel the extension of your legs, the openness of the hamstrings. Root into the big toe and inner heels. Lift the sit bones. And then exhale and fold again. Find your breath. Push off your feet. Rise up, coming to stand. Reaching the arms up to the sky if, you're, if it's available. Remember, if your blood pressure has a, a big fluctuation when you stand up, if you just squeeze your hands to the midline, you can even cross one thigh over the, eye, over the other thigh and squeeze, and this will lift your blood pressure up if you tend to have orthostatic hypotension and you kind of, you know, bottom out when you stand up. And then once you're feeling normal, shake out your fingertips. I'm doing this a lot late. Well, I would do this all the time, just being a massage therapist, my hands need it all the time, but everybody's spending a lot of time on computers these days. So let's just shake out those hands, get some energy moving to, through to our fingers, and then take a deep breath in, lift your arms back up, open the chest, big open heart. What does it feel like to open the chest up and reach the arms back? And then exhale and forearms come to touch round the back body. Open the back of the heart. Let's do that one more time. Big breath in, either arms straight or arms bent, cactus open to stretch the heart. 
And then exhale and round and feel the back round, feel the shoulder blades spread apart, chin to the chest. Inhale, arms coming up to the sky. Exhale and big circles, come forward, bend the knees, relax your head down. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt. How are the backs of your legs feeling? Is each pass through a hamstring stretch getting any easier? Let's go ahead and bend our knee, um, right knee, and take your left foot back into a lunge. We're going to um, get into some hamstring stretching today. Um, so, you know, we do a lot of hamstring stretching in yoga naturally. Uh, and sometimes, I mean, we all could use stretching everywhere in our body, but sometimes it's nice to just focus on one muscle group. So let's go ahead and Straighten the leg a little bit, tuck the chin toward the chest, and let this be nerve glides for you. So we're going back and forth. The sciatic nerve is a huge nerve in your leg. It's the diameter of a quarter at its biggest spot up in your pelvis. That's kind of like huge, that's a huge nerve. So when you glide your knee back and forth like this, it stretches the sciatic nerve a little bit, gives if, it, if the nerve is catching on any tissue and any muscles or um, fascia, it kind of frees things up like flossing your teeth, getting any gaps available to let that nerve just slide and glide. The sciatic nerve can stretch inches in normal movement pattern. And isn't that amazing that we have the ability to stretch our nerves a little bit like a rubber band, not you know extreme, but enough to accommodate for all of our movement that we do naturally. So just finding that flow, enjoying the sensations, enjoying the breath. And then walk your back foot forward, fold in half. Feel that you're bending from your hips and not from your waist. So come on up to, stand for just a moment before we do the other side and just notice when you fold from your weight here i should take off my sweater to show you this but um when you fold and try to touch your toes by folding from your back you know this is this is a lot of pressure for your spine but if you fold from your hips and take the thigh bones back regardless of whether your legs are straight or bent you have a much different feeling in the spine as you stretch your hamstrings than if you are rounding from your back. Your hamstrings attach to your pelvis. So when you lift the pelvis up, when you tip the pelvis, you stretch the backs of the hamstrings, but you do it in a way that you get to control. So the knees bent can soften the hamstrings enough where you get to be just in the right spot for your hamstrings to stretch. And you can start to lengthen from there. Let's step back into the other leg. So our left foot is forward, our right foot is back now. Feel the hip flexor stretch on that back leg. Enjoy that. Open the chest. And as you find your breath, let's start to straighten a bit through that front leg and then bend it again. And when you go into a straighter version, it doesn't have to go all the way straight, but as you straighten your leg, tuck your chin toward your chest and feel that back body zing. You know, you have a lot of connection from the base of your skull to the bottom of your feet. And see if you can feel that full back line, which the hamstrings are a central component of. Okay. Feel the sciatic nerve. Can you sense? Can you sense into a nerve sensation stretching in your body? If you have ever had sciatic nerve pain, everybody knows if you've had this, that this is just like no fun, right? So see if you can treat your sciatic nerve with the respect that it deserves. So not too much, not too little, just a perfect Goldilocks amount of um, stretch. All right, and then let's go ahead and step back to a plank. You can always put your elbows on the floor. You can always put your knees on the floor. There's lots of ways of making this pose um, more gentle for your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists. Find your breath here, stabilize through the center body. Let's go ahead and put our knees down if they're not already there so that you can come down onto the floor with ease in your shoulders. Roll your shoulders a few times. Let's just enjoy the feeling of sliding your shoulder blades around on your back. See what kind of mobility you have. And then lift up to Cobra Pose, be in a contented place with your postures. Exhale and release. Try not to hold the breath. 
Try not to push the pose. Open the pose with the breath. And allow yourself down. So try not to hold the top one third more time. Rising up, chest is broad. Exhale and release and melt back down. Come back up onto all fours. Feel a sense of freedom. So swivel around in your spine. See what feels good. And then if it's comfortable for you, and, and by the way, if you're on your wrists and it's unhappy, you can always take forearms on blocks. This is a great way to take your wrists out of the equation. You can also come up onto fists. Okay, so there's lots of ways to take your wrists into a happier place. While we're here, we're gonna pick up our feet just a couple of inches off the floor, not super high, just a couple of inches, and just sway your feet. If this is no good for your knees, keep your feet down and instead sway your torso. But if you're able to, if your knees are comfortable, pick up your feet and just sway and let your side body engage a little bit. So going from side to side, just freeing up the lumbar spine, feeling some movement. Breathing. All right, let's go ahead and relax. Come up to dog pose again. As you find your way into this big posture, start to feel the openness in the back of the body. So this full back line from your crown to, it, it actually, in, in cadavers, you can dissect out this fascial plane of the back line from the eyebrows all the way over your head, down the length of your spine, through your glutes, down your hamstrings, calves, all the way to the soles of the big toes. So see if you can access the feeling in up the feeling of that back line of the body opening. Breathe here. Let your sit bones lift. So find that little anterior tilt of the pelvis, which will help stretch the hamstrings that attach onto your sit bones. The sit bones are part of your pelvis. So feel them lift and widen. Inner spiral your thighs. Even stretch in this pose the backs of your knees. So a lot of times, you know, I have you soften the backs of the knees. Let's enjoy the popliteus muscle in the back of your knees, stretching, just open. See if you can shine some light in the backs of your knees as well. Breathe deeply and then relax and come down on into child's pose and let that whole hamstring area rest now, soften into a release. And you might feel your glutes stretch a little bit here, but not the hamstrings as much. All right, let's go ahead and find our way back onto all fours. Bring your right foot forward and walk your back foot in some. Hands come up high on the blocks. You can even stack one block on top of another block to give you even more height. You can take your right foot out to the right more. You can even put your hands on furniture if you have like a chair or something. To go as least amount of depth as you want for this posture, space matters more than depth. Inner spiral of the thighs, widen the sit bones and lift the sit bones. Probably you're getting a really good hamstring stretch in your front leg. Notice if it's, whole, if it's gripping on the sit bones or the back of the knee. See if you can feel the belly of that muscle stretch instead. Widen the belly of the muscle, like you're spreading jam on a piece of toast. Broaden the muscle out instead of just lengthen. Extend the spine. You know how when you're making a pie crust and you like roll it out in all different directions to get the shape? Feel that in your hamstrings. Breathe into the space. Okay, and then let's walk our back foot forward. Come into a squat. Put your elbows um, either on your knees or inside your knees and go where your knees and hips are happy. Find the work now in your hamstrings and glutes by pressing your feet into the floor like you're slowly gonna try to push yourself up to stand, but you're not, we're just gonna stay. But isometrically, feel the work. Breathing deeply. All right, and then go ahead and stand all the way up. Big open space, if your blood pressure bottoms out, you know what to do. Heel toe your feet in, come forward. Left foot comes forward, right foot comes back, hands on blocks, stack up your blocks higher if you want, and shorten up your stance so it's not a big long lunge. Take your left foot as far out to the left as what's comfortable for your pelvis to align to neutral. Inner spiral the thighs, lift the sit bones. See if you can root into the front big toe. 
So this is not a spot to open up the back of the knee strongly, have a little engagement in that popliteus muscle behind the knee. So you're not hyperextending. Feel the belly of that hamstring muscle open. Breathe into the pie shell that you're creating. Spread out all your fibers. You have three different hamstrings plus a little smaller muscle too. So there's a lot going on in the back of your leg. All right, let's go ahead and walk the back foot forward. This time, instead of squatting, chair pose. You can always put a block between your thighs for more support, especially if your knees are unhappy. You can also put your butt against a wall or a piece of furniture so that you're supporting your knees a little bit more if your joints are unhappy with the weight of a squat. Find your chair pose. Put your arms anywhere you want, okay? So they can be, you know, out and anywhere. Just find what's good for your breath, your shoulders, and interocept again. See if you can feel the work. So it's not just about stretching the hamstrings, but we're trying to feel the hamstrings. So root into the feet. Feel the heels press as if you're gonna, as if you weigh like a thousand pounds and you're trying to push your body into straight, but you can't because you're so grounded and heavy. Feel the work of your hamstrings in that action. Find your breath. All right, and then go ahead and stand up straight and tall. Big breath, arms up. Exhale, hand fold forward. Two blocks again, right foot forward, left foot back. Shorten up your stance again, adjust your feet to where you need them to be and come on up to stand. Hands on your hips, find your breath. Now we're gonna do a flex stretch in the hamstring. So as you come forward with your hands on your hips and you know, of course your hamstring's gonna stretch because that's just what the mechanics say. But we also need to hold ourselves in place. So see if you can press your foot into the floor. Feel that front hamstring engage all the way through the fibers. See if you can notice, is one spot kicking in faster or more? Do you have one hamstring that likes to work better than another? See if you can still inner spiral the legs, extend the spine, root the feet, soften the backs of the knees. Feel the flex stretch. This is really nice for your muscles. They get a, um, a lot of capacity by having to um, eccentrically engage like this, or it's actually an isometric when you're not moving, but it engages fibers differently than it, just a concentric muscle contraction. Inhale and come all the way back up. Notice the fatigue in your front hamstring. Walk your back foot forward. Loosen things up. You can bounce or swish, whatever feels good. And we're gonna step our other foot back. Our left foot is forward. Your right foot is back. See if you can feel in that back hamstring that you just worked, do you feel the fatigue in the belly of your muscle or is it right at the attachment of your sit bones or your knee? If it's at the attachments that you feel, try on this side to work a little differently. See what it feels like to have your hands on your hips. First, just extend the spine, use your core. So we're not isolating the hamstrings without other muscles supporting. So the core is engaged as we start to tip forward. Keep the spine long inner spiral the thighs, soften the knees, root into the feet, feel the work of that front hamstring. Can you feel the fibers of all of your hamstrings kicking in? Are there any absent? Do you have holes? Do you have gaps? See if you can fill in the gaps. Breathe your way here, relax your shoulders, feel the stretch flex in the hamstrings. Stay in the belly of the muscle instead of tugging at your attachments. Breathe your way into the weight of your thousand pounds, rooting into the earth. Feel the extension in your spine. How is your breathing? And then come back up and walk your back foot forward. And just notice, do you feel, are you more aware of your hamstrings? Find your breath, be here for a moment. Just stay in the presence. Let's have such gratitude. Our hamstrings help us stand up they help us walk, they help us move in so many ways. So let's just have deep appreciation for all they do. And notice when your hamstrings engage, it pulls on your pelvis, it pulls your tail, your sit bones down. So let's stretch a moment, lift the sit bones, bend your knees as much as you need to, bend from the waist, I mean from the hips, not from the waist, 
and come forward into a forward fold. Relax, whatever you want to relax. Keep engaging through the sense of weight in your feet. And then halfway lift, the spine is growing. Exhale and melt back down. Let's step our front right foot forward, left foot back, this time to a big lunge, so all the way all the way back and we're going to plant our back heel down so veer vajrasana one warrior one legs rise up you decide where your upper body wants to be in space leaning forward arms up arms out hands on hips just be where you want to be and then let's find the glutes too and connect them to the hamstrings press your heels into the ground both legs can you feel the back side of your legs supporting you root yourself into the earth as you rise up Feeling if there's any gaps, you know, when you, when you lose your front big heel, so lighten your front big heel and notice your glutes. They probably turned off a little bit and your hamstrings have to work a little harder. Now add the heel, press it down and your hamstrings and your glutes will come in unity together. Find your breath. And then exhale and release back foot comes forward front foot comes back let's do the same pose on the second side the heel drops down you can take the front foot out to the side wherever you want to be extending the spine root into the feet spread open the bones of your feet ground yourself rise up try not to compress the lumbar spine so remember the lift of the spine the engagement of your core and then feel your feet press your heels see what's happening are you stronger on this side is there more are there more gaps in your awareness on this side can you feel your glutes and your hamstrings in unison as you root your feet down find the work breathing deeply okay and then relax and walk your back foot forward Come to a deep forward fold, let the hamstrings stretch, bend your knees, let the glutes stretch. Halfway lift, exhale and relax. Stick the block between your thighs if you need it. If you don't, you don't have to use it. We're gonna move through chair poses here. So we're gonna come into a squat and it can be as deep or as shallow as your knees and hips need. So we're gonna come down with our arms, feel the work. And then like you weigh a thousand pounds, push slowly into straight. And this might be easier with no block. You can have your feet together or feet apart. So if you don't need the block, try without. And then of course, if you need the block for that stability, then take the block for that stability. So keep passing through. The arms come back as you squat and then your thousand pounds as you rise all the way up. And this one come up onto your tippy toes to complete the feeling of connecting your glutes and your hamstrings and then heels come down arms go back find your breath you weigh a thousand pounds push off your feet and reach on up up onto your tippy toes if you can and then this last one we're just going to stay so if you want to put the block back now's a good time to put the block back if you need that support find your breath knees draw way back into the hips so that you have a neutral spine so notice if you tend to tuck your tailbone under if engaging your hamstrings makes you tuck your tailbone see if you can engage in your hamstrings but also widen your sit bones so that your low back is just in a nice neutral place not overarched, not under arched find your goldilocks breathe into the work of your legs share the work with your hamstrings and your quads Share it with your inner thighs and your outer thighs. Have the symphony. There's a symphony going on in your muscle action. Breathe into it. Feel your body. And then stand up straight and tall. Take a deep breath. Exhale and fold forward. Step back to a plank. Find your breath here. Remember, you can always take your forearms to the ground, knees to the ground. There's ways to modify everything. And then find your way all the way to the floor. Let's find the hamstrings here, hands underneath the forehead. And let's try one at a time first. Just lift your left leg up. Engage your core so that we're not overtaxing the spine. 
feel the glutes and the hamstrings work together, can you find that sense of unity that they are harmonics with each other, those two muscle groups? Relax that leg down, find your breath, be here now, find your breath, just rest for a moment. And then when you're ready, find the other side, lifting the other leg up, feel the hamstring and the glutes connect with each other, support the lift of the leg in unity. Feel your core so that you're not arching your back too much, that you have that stabilizing force. It will make your hamstrings and glutes work differently, a little harder when you're resisting um, with your core. How is your breath? And then release and melt that down. Pick up your feet, bend your knees, and swish your knees from side to side, swaying from side to side. Breathing here, find that sense of contentment. And then when you're ready, you get to decide how you're gonna do this next action. You can either have your legs together or you can have your legs apart. See if you, you know, what's most comfortable for you. And same with your arms. Your arms can be back down at your sides, out to the sides or out in front of you. If your arms are out in front of you, your palms are facing toward each other, thumbs up toward the sky. Lift everything up and feel that back line from your head to your feet. Feel the full engagement. Are there any gaps along the way? Left side, right side, top, bottom. Are there gaps along the way? Fill in the gaps, color yourself in, breathe here. And then exhale and relax and come back to all fours for a moment just to move the spine around, release the back bends. You can swish like a fish, you can do any movement that feels good. And then eventually coming back to child's pose to rest your hamstrings. Let them soften into a passive flexion here. The breath is coming, feel the back body. Be here now. All right, last strong engagement we're gonna do with the hamstrings, come over onto your back and we're gonna come into a bridge. And when we find a bridge here, um, you can have a block between your knees if you want, however you like to stabilize best. But when you're here, let's find the lift from the back body matching the front body. So, you know, when, when you mindlessly do this pose, where do you lift from? Like what part of your body do you originate movement from? And let's see if we can originate the movement from the back line, which might feel very different from how you normally do this pose. Come on up to whatever place feels comfortable for you. And once you're there, hug your heels toward your shoulders and feel the full back line kick in, not just your hamstrings and your glutes, but the back of your torso as well. Feel that fullness and then you know, add in the other elements, add in the quads, add in the inner thighs, add in the outer hips, add in the weight of your feet, add in the breath, find the fullness of your pose. And then relax and melt back down. Okay, windshield wiper your knees left and right for a moment. Just find in that sense that you can um, relax. All right, and then release. Grab onto your strap, and we're going to um, put your right foot in the strap. And now we get to be very relaxed about stretching open the hamstring. Move your shoulders away from your ears. Find that sense of softness coming into the back body. Let yourself melt into the floor. Is there a feeling of contentment that happens when you just get to yield, when you get to melt? How does your hamstring feel? I'm hoping that you feel like you worked your hamstrings a fair amount. So does it feel good to, you know, a job well done and you get to release? Is there a feeling of contentment in that? Can you root the hip? Can you rise up through the foot? Is there a sense of space in your foot? How does it feel to roll out with your rolling pin all of the muscles in the back of your leg? Uh, there's there's a lot going on in your hamstrings. They are very strong muscles in your body. Very easy to have some micro tears at your sit bones from overstretching. So just notice if that, you know, if you've ever had a hamstring tear, 
the echo of that can live for many years. Okay, let's open the right leg out to the right, feeling that sense of um, your inner thighs and inner hamstring coming into the posture now. So as you open that leg out, what is your left leg doing? Do you want to have your foot on the floor and bend your knee? Do you want your leg straight? Do you want to butterfly the knee open? And be very mindful as the inner hamstrings, which tends to be very vulnerable. Do you feel any tug at the sit bone? Can you bend the knee just a little teeny bit? Can you back away until you feel um, that any uh, taut tension that is uncomfortable or unhealthy moves away and you instead spread the sensation to your full hamstring. And when you are ready, let's go ahead and lift that leg back up and we're gonna cross the right leg over to the left. Hold the strap with your left hand now. Move the right femur bone away and just feel the whole outer hip and outer glutes, outer hamstring start to stretch open. Remember the glutes and the hamstring are, you know, they are, um, they're, they're very harmonic with each other. They, they tend to work in a group to do a lot of action in our body of extending our leg. So every step you take when you push off your toes to, to push off that leg, this is, a, this is a, um, like a kinesthetic chain in the body of using the glutes, hamstrings, and calf all together. So feel that in the stretch as well. Let's come back to center and switch sides. So rest your legs on the ground, put your feet on the floor, windshield wiper, whatever you want to do, knees to chest, anything that feels nice to balance yourself. And then when you're ready, let's move to the second side. Bend um, your knee if you need to. So when you put your left foot in the strap, you don't have to have a, a super hyper um, extended knee. In fact, don't hyper extend your knee. Um, have a slight softness there and let the belly of the muscle stretch. See if you can, you can bend your knee as much as your hamstring needs. Dole out the stretch in an appropriate fashion where you feel that spreading, where the breath is with you, where you're not tugging at the attachment sites at your sit bone or your knee. Reach your foot up, root your hip down. See if you can get the sense that rooting the femur bone in the pelvis helps to stabilize the hamstring, that it, it keeps you in that cohesion of pelvis and femur bone that is the relationship of glutes and hamstring that helps you stay safe in stretching those muscle fibers. Let's open up the knee to the left, or the whole leg to the left, hold, hold the strap in your left hand and get the feeling, where are you in space? What do you need to do with your right side to help you ground? Do you need to Bend your right knee and put your foot on the floor. Does it feel better to have your right leg straight on the ground? Does it feel better to have your right knee bent and butterflying open to the right to help you balance across your pelvis? Just see what is giving you the best sense of grounding so that when you open up those inner hamstrings on the left side, you're not tipping your whole torso um, starboard or, or whatever side you're going. I, I, never, I don't know the nautical terms, but try not to let your whole body go to the left. Breathe deeply to be here now. Are you tugging at attachments at the inner knee? Can you back away until you feel the pie being spread out from the center outward? Go ahead and lift that leg up. Take the strap into the other hand, cross the leg over to the right. And it doesn't have to be super far. Try not to make, turn this into a giant spinal twist. Just far enough where you feel a stretch in your outer hamstring, your outer hip, your outer glutes. You wanna get that feeling that the outer leg gets to have its time in the sun. Move your femur bone away from your shoulder. Root the head of the femur bone in the back edge of your joint so that you have that congruency um, in your hip. Breathe here, stretch through your foot, stretch the muscle in its entirety. See if you can notice if there's gaps, if there's places that aren't you know, spreading out well in your pie shell. And 
And then let's lift that leg back up in the air. Take the strap away and bring your knees to your chest. Relax your feet. Let your shins fall and just release tension in your hamstrings and in your glutes. Rock around a little bit. Maybe happy baby pose is something you want. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's just too much. Just see what kind of movement that um, you are capable of. Breathe your way here. And then we're going to do a simple twist. So as you're on your back, let's put our feet down now. Scoot your hips right. Bring knees up and drop them left. And enjoy a full spinal twist. Breathe your way into the contentment of this posture. What does it feel like to just relax, to melt, to open your chest, to turn your head, to breathe deeply? Can your spine rest in this position? And if you can't, stick a block underneath your shins so you're not hanging anywhere. Um, you want to be able to have your hand rest on the floor. So if, you're, if you feel like your arm's hanging, back away from your legs until your arm touches the ground and put some support underneath your knees. Feel something support knees and hands simultaneously. Contentment often arises when we are feeling supported. Think about the way it feels when you um, are embraced, when you lean into a hug from someone. And that feeling of contentment, like you can just rest in someone's arms. Let's have that feeling in our own arms. Okay, bring your knees back up. Have a moment, readjust your pelvis neutral, knees bent, neutral spine. Take a breath here and relax your body. And then as you are ready, we can come to the second side. So scoot your hips a couple of inches one way, knees up, drop them, find the breath, and then decide where do you need some support? Are you able to have both your legs on the ground and your hand at least on the ground, maybe your shoulder too? And if you need some support in that for whatever reason, Try taking a block underneath the outer shin so that you go a little less deep so the chest and arm can relax as well. Support yourself to feel content. Um, when we feel supported, it's much easier to, do, to, to sink into the present moment, to unguard, to let go of the guards, to let yourself relax. Remember, contentment requires an essence of ease. Um, this, is, this is the practice, to find ease amidst the strain of our lives. Even when things are challenging, contentment can come if we know how to be present and at ease in our bodies and in our breath. We can find that contentment even amidst the turmoil of our lives. So practice it in your yoga practice. Practice the art of contentment in the body, of ease in the body, of presence in the body and in the breath to give us these tools to reach into when we're not in such contented places, when we are challenged and we're looking for that inner um, ease. We have it, it's available to us. We, we know how to reach for it, we know the sensation. We can, we can pull it out of our pocket when we are required, when it's required. And then relax. Knees back into your chest, rock around. Anything you need to settle yourself for Shavasana. Now I highly recommend some support underneath your knees for Shavasana today. Either a bolster, some blocks. With the, you can have your two blocks with a blanket over top of them. You can put your calves up on a chair or a couch. That might feel really nice for resting. So. Whatever you're doing, have a sense of ease and softness, like a passive flexion in your hamstrings so that you can melt as best as possible. Once you make sure you're warm, warmth is another aspect of contentment. It's chilly today. So if you feel cold, grab a blanket, grab a sweater, grab some socks, whatever is going to help you feel grounded and warm. And then as you're ready, settle into the sensation of your breath. Drop yourself down. All the practice that you do with yielding, give yourself over to that sensation now. Give yourself over to the yield. Give yourself over to the breath. Take stock and notice, are you straining anywhere in the face or in the chest or the belly? Find that sense of contentment. 
be content to just be, to just breathe. Let's go ahead and find some movement in the body slowly. Let's just start with the breath. Can you feel how your breath is in your body? How does the inhale feel? How does the exhale feel? Can you be here now? And then any movement that feels right to you.
eventually finding your way onto your side. Slowly bringing yourself to an upright position. There's no rush. Take your time. Do not be speedy on the way up. Stay in your contented, peaceful place. See if you can keep this quality with you through the day. Hands together at your heart and bow in. Offer your practice, your presence outward to another. Share your energy, this calm, centered, contented place. It's a gift to give to self and others. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great day.